Central, a place to talk about movies, TV shows based on movies, toys based on movies, games based on movies, and rides based on movies. I'm your host, Mr. CCS, and these are my pets. George the Gorilla, Kahala the Dolphin, and Frank the Turtle. Yep, that's right, two new Kahalas from Hawaii. They help me out a lot, so they'll be by my side on occasion. Now that I've returned from the tropics, it's a mighty fine time to start the 2000s decade by first talking about a highly anticipated sequel to a 1999 classic. No, I'm not talking about Deep Blue Sea. I'm talking about The Mummy. As most of you know, The Mummy was a huge hit at the box office, grossing over $400 million worldwide, making it no brainer to create a sequel. However, what would a sequel to this original classic even look like in comparison with its predecessor? Well, why not make it bigger in scale with more characters, more action set pieces, and more convoluted backstory? Well, that's exactly what happened here, with the movie being released in May of 2001, two years after the original release in theaters. While receiving mixed reviews from critics, the movie, like its predecessor, was a box office hit, grossing oh, for $435 million worldwide on a budget of $98 million. If you're curious, this movie's success led to a spin-off as well as a crappy sequel no one likes to talk about. But those two aside, was there anything worth it about this sequel? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna find out today. This is The Mummy Returns. The evil mummy Imhotep, played again by Arnold Vosloo, returns to wreak havoc as he presumes his relentless search for power and immortality. To make matters worse, another ancient evil, played by America's favorite action hero Dwayne Johnson, has been unleashed, even more dangerous than Imhotep. Only the heroic Rick O'Connell, played again by Brendan Fraser, and his intrepid Egyptologist wife, played again by Rachel Weisz, stand in the way of these twin terrorists as they embark on a desperate mission to save the world. Honestly, for a sequel, this surprisingly works a lot more than one would imagine. It's a ton of fun and it keeps the great characters from the previous movie, even feeling authentic to what the original set up, as well as doing something all together new. One not as good as the first one, The Mummy Returns' greatest strength comes in regards to tone and action set pieces, though the third minute. I enjoyed The Mummy Returns quite a bit, and I'll talk to y'all about why that's the case. So all of the main characters from the first movie return, and they return in style. Rick and Evie are now married and have a child named Alex. Overall, Rick has the same personality as he does in the original movie, and that's what worked great about him. At the same time, he's a lot less action hero in this, and far more down to earth, caring about the safety of his wife and son more than the adventure at hand, and I was perfectly fine with that. Also, he still cracks some of the funniest jokes and says the funniest lines. You, lighten up, you, big trouble, you, get in the car. If that isn't funny, I don't know what is. Now, as far as Evie goes, while I still enjoy her, there is one aspect about her as a character that I didn't care about. The generational trauma through her former soul of the Pharaoh's daughter. I have never really liked this storyline because it's extremely convoluted and because it opens up a ton of plot holes. The big one being that Imhotep mistakes her for his lover in the first film but he wouldn't have if he had known the Pharaoh's daughter, which he did. See, this could have worked, but it just didn't, and it needed one more rewrite to really patch things up. Jonathan is just Jonathan, enough said. He doesn't do much for the story, he's just there. As far as Arda Bay goes, I'm glad to see his return and his larger presence on screen. That scene where he leads the warriors of the Medjay against the army of Anubis was extremely fun and also one of the best parts about his character. Sure, I prefer him in the first movie, but I really liked Odette Fair as this character and wanted to see more of him, that's what I got. Now, as far as the new characters go, Alex is pretty decent, actually. He's not my favorite part of the movie, and he's kind of annoying, but he's got the wit of his father and the courage of his mother, which I thought worked to make his character better, even if he is kind of annoying so as far as Izzy goes, I wish we saw more of him. Because you can tell he and Rick have history, but it's not fully explored enough in my opinion. Maybe a flashback sequence would have been better in place of Evie being the Pharaoh's daughter, but that's just me thinking out loud. So the new characters aren't awful in the case of the heroes, but they don't have much to do. As far as villains go, holy Christ, as goofy as the cult of Imhotep sounds as an idea, 
Seeing characters like Baltus Hafez and Loch Nah were just so much fun. One is the over-the-top cult leader, while the other is the muscle that is always intimidating. It helps that this guy who played him also played Curse and Killer Croc in the 2010s. And he's got the size most definitely. To be real, Loch Nah is unintentionally hilarious at some points. His rage always cracks me up. Anyways, that's all I have to say about him. Now, as far as the actual main villains go, Mila as a character being the reincarnation of Imhotep's lover was kind of cool? But at the same time, it's weird that there's still a plotline like this existing in this movie. How does Imhotep believe her instantly? I don't know. To quote Bowser, I guess love really makes a guy come out of his shell. Speaking of Imhotep, bro, this guy had such a great comeback. You thought he meant nothing by saying death is only the beginning. Oh no sir, he meant it. Not only is he still terrifying, but he's also come back with quite the vengeance. We actually get to see his kills on screen, and we see the extent of what he can really do. The only thing that is kinda negative is the fact that he isn't as intimidating as he was in the original movie. That sucks, because I love him in the original movie, and while I think he's great here, he's not as great as he was before. That said, Arnold Vosloo knocks it out of the park. Now, there is one more villain I have to talk about, and that villain is the Scorpion King. This was The Rock's first real movie role, and to be honest, he is not the most interesting thing about this movie. While I love Dwayne as an actor in most things I've seen him in, here he's just kind of there. Of course, he would expand upon his character in the Scorpion King spin-off film, but I haven't seen that movie yet, so I don't know if he's interesting in that. Also, just look at this CGI atrocity. How does ILM produce something this awful? This is horrendous. It's not the absolute worst CGI I've ever seen, but it is a close second because it looks so unnatural, and thankfully we've seen better CGI since. Still, this is horrible. I don't think I need to address this anymore. We can actually transition into talking about the effects from here. Some of them hold up, like Imhotep's undead form, which was a lot less scary now, but still cool, as well as the water phase, and the environment built around the characters, but stuff like the Scorpion King, the Anubis army, and the balloon look not so great, especially the Scorpion King, but that's neither here nor there. The effects aren't great, but I am happy to report that some of them do hold up. Slightly. As far as the score goes, it was composed this time by Alan Silvestri, who I think did a great job replicating the style of Jerry Goldsmith. However, while I love the score for this, and I think it fits the tone of the movie well, Goldsmith made a much more energetic and better score for the previous film. I remember that far more than anything in this film. However, I can't diminish the film's score because it actually works for the tone established. Finally, we have the action scenes. Honestly, the house fight, the chase through London, the water scene, and the finale are all the action scenes I remember most. I mean, I also kind of like the jungle scene with the mini undead creatures, but it's not as memorable as the ones mentioned before. So overall, I really enjoyed The Mummy Returns. No, it's not as good nor as iconic as the 1999 original, but I still think for a sequel it works pretty well, and I can find myself rewatching it on occasion. Some of the stuff doesn't work, but I can look past some of those things and just have a great time, which is why I think a 9 out of 10 is a fair score for this movie without a doubt. Well, that's it for this review. Now that I'm safe from the wrath of evil, I can finally resume things as normal, though we'll be in here for quite a minute. So tune in next week when I take a look at a not-so-great sequel to a classic I love so much. With that said, my name is Mr. CCS, this is Movie Central, and that, my friend, is a wrap. See you next week.